so to the TV shows, we had Star Wars Bad Batch and Loki. The premiere of Loki. The premiere of Loki, yes. This was the first episode. I would just say we we could go with Loki first. Yeah, might as well since it's the premiere. It's the premiere, and there wasn't really too much. There was like there was enough information to know what was going on, but it wasn't like anything too. Major. Right out, sorry, right off the bat, uh, I remember that painting in the the little girl in the church when she pointing it to the the glass painting. Yeah. People yeah. already been speculating that they still want it to be Mephisto. If, if you remember from on the vision, now how the everyone kept saying it's like, oh, it's gonna be Mephisto, Mephisto's gonna be around there, and now again we're going to the same concept like, is it Mephisto behind this? Even though at the end of the episode it's like, oh, it's no, it's not no Loki. Now there was another theory about a lady Loki that has actually been seen in the old commentary form. That's another speculation. My whole speculation, if it if it's the female Loki, Loki or uh, the second Loki, I think it's just Loki. Period. Throughout history, it's just this particular uh, belief of him is the devil instead of uh, the god of mischief, basically. And I, there was an Easter egg that I when I saw it, I I could not believe I'd even catch it. Um. Do you remember Sharon Carter? Yeah. She was actually there on the lobby. What? Huh? Yes. She was actually right there in the lobby. I did not even know until somebody pointed it out. I'm like, yeah, there she is. Holy shit. Damn. But to start off with this, basically, as we already kind of explained most of it, uh, Loki gets, it, it basically starts from Endgame. Yeah. Yeah, in game where he escapes with the Tesseract, goes in a desert. He gets picked up by these time people because technically he wasn't supposed to do what he did. Yes, he got arrested by the TVA, the Time Bearable Agency, or something like that. Yes, I think so. But yes, they got Loki gets captured by then, and Loki's trying to get his head around things. Or like, what is happening with him? <laughs> I still laugh about the Infinity Stones. Oh, yeah, with the memes? Well, the memes and just in the show, they're just like, oh, yeah, we use them as paperweights. It's like... Yeah, we get those a lot. Bitch says what? <laughs> we get those a lot. <laughs> but it, it's kind of interesting because since this is time itself, it's like nothing technically works like magic, the Infinity Stones. The Infinity Stones are basically nothing in this. And it, it's just, it's really interesting on how how this part of the multiverse actually works. Yeah. I, I actually forgot to do this. I, this Loki's first house is called Glorious Purpose. My bad. <laughs> uh, we just went straight into it. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where it was just like, you see all the Infinity Stones, the Tesseract, he asked about the Avengers breaking time. He's like, ah, fuck those guys. They're good. Well, she was just like, she was flat out like, they were actually supposed to do that. Loki was like, wait, what? Basically, this is basically trying to explain to Loki that everything that has happened to him and everyone around him, like, is part of the timeline. You're on your Every, path. Everything has always been set since the very beginning. Yeah. Like, there's, there's like, nothing you can do about it. It's always been part of the plan. And so when Loki is uh, when Loki deviates from the ti- that time, they're called variants. And so uh, basically, um, and that's where the TVA comes in. They need to catch these variants so that so that if so that if it, if they don't catch them, the timeline goes out of goes out of whack. Yes, out of whack. And it basically goes into like a time war, and it just it keeps breaking up so much to the point to where it catches in the universe. Basically, summary of it because they went into like full detail on that whole thing. Yeah. And it was just crazy. But basically, at the same time of all this, and they're interviewing Loki, or basically yeah, doing whatever they're, they're doing. Uh, um, Agent uh, Mobius? Yeah, Agent Mobius basically interviewing him, trying to get a bit of more concept of who Loki is. And why he does what he does. But, um,. Basically, as all this is going on, you got time cops, 
we're just calling time cops for short. Um, they're getting killed little by little, and um, he basically tells Loki is that it it's him, but it's a different him that's doing it, and they bas- he basically asks him for help. Multiverse theory is a bitch. Yep. The only thing we didn't mention that I thought was, like, seriously an eye-opener for him was when he was able to see his entire future that has yet to happen to him. Get fucked. <laughs> well, Basically. well, that's the thing, though. Like, he's able to see that because at the end of the day, because at the end of the day it was supposed to happen. Like, it was going to happen regardless. Well, yeah. That's it, why he's it, able to see it. So, like, no matter what, he dies. Yeah. But, but so this Loki, you know, now that he's a Baron, he's completely escaped his time. Now it's a completely unknown future for him. Yeah, at this point, he, he has no idea what his future is. Yep. But I feel like whatever happens, he might be basically stuck where he's at. And he might become a good guy, basically. And I want to say good guy, more of a guy that... Less of a dick. <laughs> sure, if you want, if you can say that, sure. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for Loki. Yeah. All right, so then, bad batch. This episode is called Battle Scars. <sighs> this one was good. It was. I already liked. Um, I already liked. Uh, well, okay. Yes. Well, I, I it's kind of like it's like almost at the, almost after the beginning of the of the, how it's already connected to Fallen Order, how they went to the planet of Braga. Oh, to, that yeah. yeah, to the starship graveyard. And so me me, me and Wickless there, we kept asking us so all. I'm like, it's like is is um Kale Castle's gonna show up? Is he gonna show up? Is he gonna show up? Because <laughs> he should be at that planet during this time. Yeah, as a kid. So we just we just asked him like, is he gonna show up? No, he never showed up. But that would've been cool. That wasn't cool, but at this point, like almost every Jedi is like or young Lee is like in hiding, low profile, so like you can't really expect to see them all yeah, the time. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So since we're jumping ahead, at this point, they're still working for the guild, and then Rex shows up. Papa Rex. Who's looking for the guild? No, I said the badge is working for the guild because they're working for. Sid. Oh yeah, for Sid. Yeah. yeah. They're demanding more pay. From her. And said, like, nope, you ain't cheap. Oh, you Someone keeps ordering fucking food and put it on a tab. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's a tradition to when the mission ends, they, they basically eat popcorn. It, it's popcorn. It, it's basically. like colorized caramel popcorn, what I see. <laughs> yeah. And Rex, and yes, Rex, this is where Rex was able to find them and tell them everything that's been happening so far. And then they asked him what he's been up to, and he's like, it's too long of a story. My own thing. I don't need to explain myself to you. But then uh, we get into the problem of, uh, once again, with Wrecker and the headaches, and that's when Rex gets the idea that he, he noticed that they haven't removed their inhibitor chips. They don't need to. They're he was ready to kill them right right there. Like, Rex was willing to kill them right there on the spot. He knew the, the danger. Even though he doesn't want to bury any more brothers. Well, it was just like with Wrecker, with the headaches, he was already getting like the. Well, idea. No, he was willing to kill all of them right down the spot. Yeah. Well, was, yeah. At first, it was like, oh, you guys haven't removed them, so like. You're a threat. <laughs> all, all four of you are a threat. Because he, as soon as they mentioned Crosshair, that's when he even got more on the offen- uh, defense side of it. Yeah. So. And so that's when Rex told them that to remove these. Chips, you know, that's where they go to Braga to get into a star, an old starship that were basically where what Ahsoka did to Rex on uh, on that medical bay. Mm-hmm. And on their way, uh, Echo was making a uh, scanner. Yep. To be able to locate the uh, the chip, so they could be able to get into the exact point and remove it, so there was no, uh, I guess, issues. Yeah, and to then, have their baseline with it. And then the big moment happened that everyone's been waiting for. I called it. Yes, you called it. I was so happy and scared. I think mostly scared. I was more scared, but I was like, fucking called it. I'm right. I, I was more sad about it because I was like, out of all the people, I wouldn't want it to see happen to record. 
Yes, Wreckers inhibitors have finally activated, and he got his orders. His orders, well, his first orders that any any uh, clones who disobey Order sixty six must be neutralized. That was his order. Yep, and he almost did it. I like how I was saying weekly is that like this entire sequence, like it's like I was getting Terminator vibes from <laughs> this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was definitely there. It was definitely there. Must find Sarah Connor. <laughs> but they knock him out. They get it out. Then Omega wants and, to wait. Yeah, she's like, no, I want to stay because they basically formed a bond. I think I think Omega has gotten closest to Wrecker from all of them. Well, and I, Hunter. I, yeah. It, with Wrecker, because of his childlike personality, they're, they're probably able to get well, a... Well, not just childlike, more of a, like his caring side. Yeah. So they're able to get along a little bit easier. Yeah. But then all everyone gets their chip moved after Wrecker wakes up because he took the longest to wake up. Well, yeah, because it's activated. Well, yeah, his is activated. But we even when we look at back at Rex, he almost woke up immediately after. Yeah, that's true. It wasn't like a few hours or anything. Yeah. But since he also got knocked out, he was probably also going through that whole thing too. But everyone has their chip removed. Hunter and Rex have their little moment outside. And it just finally basically just ends there because the guild saw uh I wanna say Squad ninety nine. Clone Force? Yeah. Yeah, Clone Force ninety nine. What are you, what are you trying to say? I was trying to say their unit. I I didn't want to say the wrong number. But uh the guild saw them enter back into the ship, so because that's where it basically ends. The and guild, the scrapping guild. Oh, well, we're just calling everyone a guild. I mean, I mean, basically that's what they are. I guess because like well, the through Clone Wars and Rebels, they're called the uh, scrap guild. Yeah, they like weren't. They're always in particular. They're always like this guild. That's basically what they always were. But they saw them enter back into the ship, so I'm basically thinking next episode they're going to have to fight their way out. Yeah. And hopefully we can find Cal before they leave. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I don't know. One can hope. <laughs> One could hope, but I don't think it's going to happen. That's it for TV? Yeah, that's it for TV. We yeah. go straight into the anime.